Hello everyone and welcome to Guru Squad. My name is Ahmed Amin. I'm going to be going over GS Hitch Copy 360 command line interface feature. Up until today, GS Hitch Copy 360 standard and enterprise have always been a, a Windows uh, GUI applications that you control via user interface. However, now with the introduction with the command line interface, you could also uh, use command line to create, delete, enable, disable, schedule jobs, basically full functionality via the command line. This is very useful when it comes to automations or if you want to try to create scripts for users to initiate, to basically invoke a job or, or to do whatever you need at the end of the day or schedule it. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the command line and how we can access help file. So, basically we're on a machine that's got GS Search Copy 360 installed and I went to the command line and I browsed, I basically went all the way to where the Guru Squad GS Search Copy 360 folder is and we type in GS Search Copy 360 space forward slash question mark. This will provide you with all the different options and parameters that you could use to create, dis enable, disable, a schedule, a job, just basically full functionality. If you scroll up, you'll be able to see all the different parameters that are used along with different uh, text describing each different feature. Now, as you can tell, you do have a lot of parameters that you could basically choose from to, to create your jobs. Now, let's not get intimidated by this because there's another way that you could create the jobs that you want in basically seconds. So let's go over that. But just know that GS Search Copy 360 does provide you with a help file that gives you all the documentation. That can be helpful sometimes. Also in the help file we do provide different about six different examples of different six different jobs that we created that you could possibly choose from. So we've already covered the JSH Copy 360 question mark. Now we're going to go over the generate command line script from GUI. What basically that is, is if you go back to the Windows machine that's got the GUI, the client installed, and we launch JSH Copy 360, we can go in and create a job. So we can right click here, create a job. You basically create the job that you want to create, you want to use as a template, let's say. So let's say this is a test job, so we'll call it test. Um, go from C colon backslash uh, source. And we would like to copy the root. And we're going to go ahead and copy it to C colon backslash destination. And you can add all the different functionality that you want. I'm going to put the logs right here so we can specify where we want to place the logs. We can put emails as well. You can put a comma or a semicolon, whatever you want, to separate different email addresses. So you can say uh, support at gurusquad.com. <coughs> and then you can basically do the scheduling, what time you want to do it. If you want to repeat the schedule, you can go in here and set whatever schedule you want. It could be as advanced as you want it to be, basically. So we'll go ahead and have it run every day at you know, this time, starting, uh, say, February 16th. Click OK. You could do the number of threads. It's important to note that um, if you want to use the command line, you should always use the run as service. So we'll go ahead and set the service. Click save. Now we've created a job called test. Now I want to use that as a template. So we just right click on it. Generate command line script. Now that script has been copied to our clipboard. We can go into um, a notepad file if you would like. Right click and paste it. And you can see the job right here. <coughs> If you want to create that job, you can go in here. If you want to use it as a command line, you could basically go in and say, 
if I click here, and we can go through and we can change the job name if you want it. Test two, press enter. Job has been created, and it gave us a job ID of 232. We go back to the Windows GUI, right click and refresh. And we can find a test two right here. And if you double click on it, you'll notice that the entire job has been created exactly like how the first job was. So that's one way to create it. Now, how is that helpful? First of all, it gives you all the parameters you need. The only thing that basically that's going to differ is your source and destination, and possibly you know move or copy all. But you know if you copy everything as the way you want it, the only thing that will differ is your job name, source, destination, and possibly some of your scheduling, which we'll go over that in a second. <coughs> so. With the command line, basically when you generate the script, the script is all it's giving you is create a job. So JSearch copy 360, create job. Now we've got additional option parameters that we could use instead of creating a job. We can create a job and say create and run job, which will basically create the job and run it on the fly. Run an existing job, which basically if we already have a job that's created and all we want to do is just invoke it to run. We can delete an existing job. This is more for administration. If you want to delete jobs that you know you no longer need from the command line, you could do that. It's also part of automation. Uh, stop an existing job. If you know a job is running and you would like to stop it somehow from a different machine, you could do that. Enable job, disable job, pretty self-explanatory. Service IP. What service IP does is, if you've got GSH Copy 360 installed on machine B, and you would like to create jobs on that machine, but your own machine A, so what you could do is you could type in JSearch copy 360 service IP, type in the IP address or the machine name of that remote machine that you would like to stop or create a job on. And then the rest of your command, you press enter, and that will go ahead and create it for you. So let's go ahead and look at that create job and run existing job. So if we go here, Basically, we can create a we can create and run job. So this is, says uh, create a job. So we can say create and run job. And we can change the job name because we can't have duplicate names. I'm gonna press enter. So this will not only create the job, it will create it, run it, and also schedule it for the future. If we come here, right click, test three, it looks like this job is actually created and ran. And the next time it's going to run is according to its schedule. So it already ran through. If you look at status, test three has completed successfully. So that's one way to run a job. Uh, other parameters that we could play with. is run an existing job. So let's say we wanted to run job test three. So what we could do is we can type in GS rich copy 360 run existing job. And then we type in job ID. Two three three. So status is done. We can look here. Job is already running. It's successful. It completed. So now we should have another entry for test three. And the same thing goes for enable job, disable job, delete existing job. So you can know, you just look at search copy 360 space forward slash question mark and it will give you all the different parameters and examples and you will see that. See these are pretty easy and straightforward to uh, understand. Now 
some of these parameters that we could use do require uh, additional optional parameters. So, for example, when I tried to use enable job or when I wanted to do a, a create or run existing job, I had to specify a job ID or a job name. In a job name, you would have to put in a quotations. Then another option we have is delete job when complete. So basically what we can do is we can create a job, let it go ahead and copy from A to, you know, from source to destination, and when you're done running that job, delete it. So this way, you know, we don't have to keep jobs in the database in case we're running a job every day. You know, we don't have to, we want to delete it afterwards. It's an optional parameter that you could use. Let's go ahead and take a, take a look at one like that. So basically we can go in here and we can say we're going to go ahead and create and run job and at the end of it so let's go ahead and change the job name so we're doing test 4 and we're going to go ahead and say delete when complete and it's not case sensitive press enter Oh, delete job when complete. Sorry. So now we have job 234. If we refresh real quick, we'll see 234 is right here. It's running, and it's completed, and now it's gonna it should delete itself. If we refresh, you see that job is gone. We come to the status. 234 has been run and it's been deleted and labels it as deleted. So it has job, delete job when complete. Source name and source password. So basically if you wanted to create to the source or to the destination as a different user, you have the option to use a, a predefined table uh, or a predefined database where you could store your usernames and passwords right here you can basically go in and say new user and then you type in the server name that you want to or a label that you want to give it so you could say admin access admin to server one and then you type in the admin username password and you type in let's say corp domain and stuff like that so you could basically have the option to use that and in that case you would use a uh, different parameter, but let's say you didn't not want to you wanted to specify those usernames and passwords on the fly So you do have that option to do so And this is where you basically specify you could use source username and source password And destination username and destination password. So in this case <coughs> We could type in the same command. So I'm going to go ahead and select the same command. I'm going to say I'm going to take out delete job when complete. I'm going to type in source username um, GS rich copy. And then I can type in source password. But in this example, I'm not going to type in source password because what I want it to do is I want it to prompt me for that password. So if I type in enter, you'll notice it says enter source password. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and type in my password. And then it completed. It's got to the job ID 235. If I come in here, now the job is probably going to fail because I typed in the wrong username and password. But So 235 completed. No, it tapped in the right password. All right. So, so that was one thing we were able to do. Now you could do the same thing with the destination password and destination username. If it's that uh, you want to try to connect to the destination as a different user, then you could use that as well. Finally, you could use preserve credentials. Uh, when you do specify username and password uh, for the source or the destination in a job in the command line, um, it will only do it for the first time it runs. After that, it will clear it out of its uh, 
memory. However, if you do preserve credentials, then it will save those credentials for this job only. If you even copy that job or if you um, enable it to say, if you copy that job, it will not go through. If you try to uh, change its settings as far as who Connect has and so forth, it will also lose those credentials. The only time it will, um, it will stay intact is as long as you don't touch the credentials in the job itself, but that's for preserved credentials. Now the next thing we want to go over is basically the service, uh, the configuration of the service file. As we mentioned that you could use a service IP to control a machine from a command line. So basically a remote machine can issue commands to run. Well by default only local host can do that. So the machine itself can issue commands to itself. However if you wanted to be do it remotely you would have to go into a config file which is called jshitchcopy 360 servicexeconfig and then there's a parameter defined key that says allowed IP addresses. In there, you could just put a comma and start typing all the IP addresses that you want to give the management. So that way when they connect, jshitchcopy360 service is going to say, okay, you're in my allowed screen and it will take them through. Do not clear out the 127.0.0.1 because if you try to do that it will open it up so if, you know it's probably not a good measure security measure the next configuration that's in there that we want to make sure that we let you know about it is is only admin allowed from CLI so basically by default we only uh, we allow only admins on the machine itself to be able to run the command line however if you want to users with uh, with less than admin privileges to to control it then at that point what you have to do is come into this command line to that configuration file and change it from true to false once that's done you get a stop and start the service and then at that point that configuration will take effect same thing for the allowed IP addresses you could do that same thing And that's pretty much, uh, that covers GHH Copy 360 command line interface features. Um, I know it's been a, maybe a long nugget that we talked about it, but uh, it does cover quite a bit. And by the, you know, if you get yourself familiar with it and play with it for a little bit, you'll be able to figure it out in no time. Uh, however, if you do still have questions or you've got any concerns or you want us to uh, consider new features in it, uh, by all means, let us know at um, support at gurusquad.com if you wanted to email us or you can also call us by phone or give us uh, hit us up on Skype. Uh, my name is Ahmed Amin. I would like to thank you very much for your time and thank you for viewing. Bye-bye.